Good morning. Are you awake? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, some of you have been wondering. Uh, the finance committee uh, have been meeting uh, regularly with the elders and with the deacons looking over our budget for the next year. Uh, so our plan is to present a, a budget for you to approve in January. So I wanted you to be aware of uh, what is, you know, what is coming. And so that'll be here at the first of the year. We, we will have a budget for you that you can look over and approve as a church family uh, to let you know exactly where we're at and what's going on. Uh, I was just, uh, it was hard to believe. I was looking yesterday. I realized last Sunday um, was my 10th year as your pastor um, and, and it's hard for me to believe that, and I know for some of you who have been here the entire time, it's hard for you to believe that, because uh, it goes by so fast. Uh, my, my girls were babies <laughs> 10 years ago, and, and now I've got ones getting ready to graduate high school, and things, things move quickly, and time passes quickly. And I, I know 10 years ago, I felt like I was just a kid, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I want to just thank you for your your graciousness and your patience with me over those 10 years. And, and I want you to know, uh, although I do, I, I think I've, I've grown and I've changed, I, I still have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, that's not a great encouragement to you, but I, it's just a reminder that we need the Lord's help more than anything else. Uh, as a church, individually, uh, we cannot do anything apart from his help and apart from his grace. Uh, but we want to look together at the word this morning. Uh, I trust that you have come prepared to receive what the Lord has for us. Uh, let's look at our passage together, Luke chapter 2. Familiar territory, uh, one that you have read many times, uh, more than life. If you've grown up in the Christian tradition, uh, probably one you read as family uh, around your table, around your Christmas tree. Uh, it, it is the Christmas story, and uh, as familiar as it is, uh, there can be a, a hindrance for us this morning in that we can miss the glories and the wonders of what the Lord has for us. We can almost come and feel like, I know that story, right? And I, I know everything there is to know about that story. And so I want to encourage you to try and hear with new, fresh ears this morning, uh, and just allowing, this is a story that, yes, we know but it's a message that never grows old. And so let's, let's look to the Lord. Uh, we'll read our passage here. Luke 2, we'll go back to verse 8. It says, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you once more, Lord, we do come with the, the desire to praise and glorify your holy name. We come with thankful hearts because of the work that you have accomplished through your Son, through our Lord Jesus, who left heaven and came to earth, we think of this one born in a manger, but Lord, we are reminded that he came to die on a cross to pay the penalty for our sin. And Lord, we do not deserve that. Even as we come into this place this morning, we come as a sinful people. We have sinned against you in word, in thought, and deed. And Lord, we do not deserve your love or your grace, but you make it known every morning. Your mercy is new. And Father, as we come to your word now, I pray that you would help us to see that you would strike us with awe and wonder, that you would give us ears to hear, 
Lord, perhaps there are some in this place who have yet to come to saving faith. And they need to hear the gospel. They need to see. They need to see Jesus as he is in truth, Savior and Lord. They need to see their sinfulness. And Lord, I pray that you would just open their eyes. Lord, that they might believe and receive Jesus for who he is. And for us as your people, Lord, may you just strike us with this sense of wonder at who you are and what you have done. And may it move us to go and to share and to to worship and praise your name. We think of those who can't be with us this morning, Lord. Uh, Those who are dealing with sickness and, uh, Lord, some extended for for a long time now and would love to be out and just not able to be. And we do pray for your healing. We know that any healing that comes about comes from you. Ultimately, we pray that your will will be done in each and every place. We want nothing more than your glory. And, Lord, I pray that you would move in these situations to accomplish your purpose. Lord, we ask that would be the case here this morning. Get me out of the way. Speak to us according to your word. We pray and ask it all in Jesus' name. And amen. It's hard for us, I think, maybe to put ourselves in the place of the shepherds. Uh, We tend to kind of look at this story and put it up on uh, a pedestal a little bit. But for the shepherds, it was just another day. You know, they had went out to work that night and... Yeah, you know, it was another. It was another night. Yeah, you know, they they were just trying to get through the night watch and hope that things were uneventful. And and we know this. It was anything but uneventful. Uh, and and you know, you, you say, well, how could it be just another day when God has a message for you? And that's what happened, right? I mean, suddenly out of nowhere, there's an angel standing before these shepherds, and, and they're receiving this word from God, <laughs> and it's it's good news. Right? Good news for all peoples. Uh, this overwhelming message. And I think it's possible for us to kind of get in a routine of things and to wander in the church doors this morning as if it's just any other day. And, and I want to remind you this morning that today is, is anything but just any other day. God has a message for you this morning. He has a message of good news for you this morning. And so I I want you to to listen carefully to what the Lord has for us. Right, Good news for all peoples of great joy. This news is the news of a Savior that is to be born. A Savior come to earth. The Creator entering into His creation. And He didn't come as a conquering king. He came as a little baby born in a manger. And this baby is unlike any other. It's a baby who was born with the purpose of rescuing men, right? Rescuing sinners. And so we marvel at this news this morning. And the shepherds certainly would have been stunned, right? They went out to to watch over the sheep on the night watch. And the next thing they know, they're in the presence of this glory and this brightness. It says that the glory of the Lord shone round about them if you're familiar with the scriptures at all, you know that is a, an overwhelming sense. People are crushed. They fall apart. They're on their faces in, in the presence of the glory of, of God. The angel's first words were, fear not. Right? There's this fear that overtakes them. And then the message of this good news. You can imagine as they heard it. And and, and, and the angel continues there in verse 12 and says, This will be a sign for you. Everything we have told you, right? You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. They didn't ask for a sign, but they got one, right? And, and it's just a sign in the sense that when you see this, you'll know that you have arrived. You have come to the place where you will see this good news for yourself. <laughs> you know, not because they find a baby wrapped in cloth. That would have been the norm, right? They could have went throughout. I'm sure there could have potentially been at this time as a census and people gathering from all over, there could have been more than, there could have been multiple births that night and it would have been the norm to see babies wrapped up. That's what they did. But to find a baby wrapped in cloth lying in a manger would have been highly unusual. In fact, it would have been unheard of. 
Right? This is, we're talking about a feeding trough is what we're talking about. So you're going to go to Bethlehem and you're going to find a newborn baby and it's going to be where the animals eat. Right? That stands out. And, and so the shepherds hear this news and, and with the message of the Messiah delivered as if things weren't crazy enough, look at verse 13. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth Peace among those with whom he is pleased. <laughs> All right. I mean, we, we read Luke chapters 1 and 2, and we almost get the feeling that angel appearances are normal. <laughs> I mean, Zechariah and, and Mary, and we know that Joseph sees an angel, and now the shepherds, and you just got, it's like, this happens all the time. But it doesn't happen all the time. It's not normal for angels to appear to men. We see some occurrences of it throughout the Old Testament, but at this point in the life, particularly in the life of God's people, Israel, God has been silent for 400 years. There's been no word from the Lord. No prophet, no dreams, no visions, no angels. And now, on this night, not only does the angel, uh, most likely Gabriel, appear with this message, but then... An army of angels fills the sky, praising God. Nothing prepares you for a moment like that. I can't even, I can't even fathom. I can't imagine what it would be like. There's been different times where I have been in places filled with thousands of people where we were singing the praises of God. Uh, every other year we go down to Louisville to a pastor's conference and ten to 12,000 people and, and to stand and sing and praise God together is an overwhelming sense. But in, on this day, it's the angels of heaven. And this is what they do. They praise God. They glorify Him. They worship Him. They sing His praises. Listen to Revelation 5. Revelation 5 verse 11 says, I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Myriads upon myriads. We don't, we don't know how many angels were there on the hillside of Bethlehem that night. It just says, a host. It's an army. An army of angels praising God. Why? Because the angels were absolutely over, they were, they were enraptured by what God was doing in this moment. They had seen it all. They had seen the fall of man. They had, seen, they had seen God choose this people and make a promise and say there's going to be one through whom your line is going to come blessing to all the nations. The angels had washed as there were sacrifice after sacrifice as a covering for sin, all pointing to a Messiah and a Savior. First Peter tells us the angels long to look into these things. They, they see it and they just marvel at what God is doing. And so now, as, as the Messiah is born, and he enters into creation, this whole host of heaven begins to praise God. Glory to God in the highest. Right? This is what is ushered in. In fact, the, the birth of Jesus is the greatest manifestation of the glory of God in all of history. Understand, Jesus Christ is the highest expression of God's glory. John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, right? The glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. When Jesus Christ came, he gave us the fullest picture of the glory of God that we would ever see. And the angels now are, are praising God, glory in the highest. There can be no higher picture of God's glory than what you are about to behold. And that's true for you and I this morning. I, I, I want you to hear this morning the good news that the angels proclaim. They are pointing us, heart, soul, mind, they are pointing us to the Messiah, to the Savior. 
because of who he is, because he has come, but also because of why he has come. Right? Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Jesus did come. He did come as a baby. He didn't just come to make a visit, right? He came to accomplish a purpose. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Thank you. You should get excited about that. The, the shepherds are, are overwhelmed at this news, and the angels are rejoicing, and they're praising God. Glory to God. Peace on earth. Now, we're so familiar with the, the old KJV translation, right? Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And, and we kind of just feel like this moment is, is ushering in this, this peace over the entire earth. And, and everybody's going to feel good and happy towards each other. And, and this Christmas season is all about this holly jolly time. But we don't see peace on the earth. We don't see, right, goodwill toward men. And we, we, we hear that and we go, what exactly was God ushering in here? But you know, all the modern translations, would, they, would, they would render it this way. Peace to those with whom he is pleased. To those with whom he, Peace comes to those who find God's grace. Peace comes to those who experience God's favor. Who is God pleased with? Only those who are dressed in the righteousness of Christ. Right? God's pleasure is on his children. Right? Apart from Jesus, we are at enmity with God. Right? We're, we're enemies with him. We're in conflict with him. And you would not acknowledge it this morning, but if you're here and you've, you're not saved and you've never put your trust in Jesus, the Bible says that you hate God. You say, well, I don't hate God. You don't, want, you don't want anyone to tell you what to do. You don't want to allow his word to be over your life. You don't want to submit to him. You don't want to seek after him. You want to do your own thing. You want to live your own life. This is a description of what it is to be without Jesus, right? You, you're at odds with God, with his word, with his will. We were enemies of God, but then Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, we have been justified by faith, and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So through this baby who was born in a manger that day, God made it possible for us to have peace with him. Those who were separated, those who were at odds with him, he has reconciled peace to those with whom he is pleased. Who is God pleased with? Those who receive his son by faith. Who put their trust in him. You say, why would I believe in a little baby who was born 2,000 years ago? Because you're not just believing in a little baby. You're believing in the God-man who came to earth. Who lived the life you could not live. And who died the death on the cross that you deserve. He came. He came to die. And he came for you. Hear, hear the good news this morning. God has come, and he glorifies himself through this gospel message. He glorifies himself through this good news, and he glorifies himself by bringing peace. Not the absence of conflict and war, but reconciliation between his creature and the creator. We have been united with God through Jesus Christ. And so now it's possible for there to be peace between God and man. Peace on earth. I, I find it interesting. The, the irony of Christmas for me is a time that's meant to turn our attention to God, to bring glory to God and bring peace, <laughs> tends to be a time when we are the most distracted. Tends to be a time when peace eludes us. The pace of Christmas is so frenzied, isn't it? We have so much to do and so much to buy and so many places to be. That's why we need to be here this morning. I, I need it. I need, to, I need this time together, brothers and sisters, to call my attention from all of the, the noise and, and, and just retune my heart to the 
to the glories of Christmas, to the good news that we celebrate at this time. It's sad. This time of year tends to be a time when depression and suicide are on the rise. A, a time when it's supposed to be glory to God and peace on earth, and we marvel at the, the reality is, as much as I talk about joy this morning and peace this morning, and, and we do, we hear it everywhere, right? Even if you're not a Christian and, and you're not looking at this, it's a, it's a holly jolly Christmas, right? And everybody's supposed to be happy and merry and jolly. And when you don't feel that way, you feel like something's wrong. And, it, it, and oftentimes it heightens this sense, sometimes a sense of loneliness, sometimes a sense of loss, sometimes a sense of meaningless. And I don't know where you're at this morning, but it, it's possible that you're here this morning and Christmas for you is not peaceful. It is not joyful. And, and I want to encourage you this morning to hear the good news. Hear it afresh because it's for you. It's for you this morning. If you are down, if you are discouraged, if you are depressed, if you are thinking thoughts you know you should not think, this message is for you. Glory to God in the highest and peace. See, those who experience peace with God can also experience the peace of God. And the peace of God passes understanding. And that is your greatest need this morning. This is what Christmas is. This is what Christmas is about. As we turn our minds from all of the noise and we look at Jesus, we remember who he is. We remember what he has accomplished. It's really an incredible picture, isn't it? The scene on the hills of Bethlehem with the shepherds. And as, as suddenly as those angels came, they were gone. We come to verse 15. The angels went away from them into heaven. And the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. I want you to hear the good news this morning, but I also want you to see the good news. You know, after the, after the, the angelic announcements, the shepherds hightail it to Bethlehem. We don't know how far. More than likely, it was a couple miles. Right? By foot, they, are, they head, they leave their flock, and they head straight for Bethlehem, wanting to see for themselves what the angels have proclaimed and how incredible it must have been to find things exactly as the angel had said. Can you imagine them going through the streets? How are we going to find this baby? Where are we going to look? And there, off in perhaps a cave or a, 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 a shed, is, is this, little, this, this couple with this little baby in a feeding trough. And, and just, can you imagine the conversation that night? Mary and Joseph... Mary's just holding this precious little baby in her arms. And they see these shepherds. Can I help you? <laughs> well, you're not going to believe this. But an angel just told us that we should look for a baby who was in a manger. <laughs> and that this baby was going to bring glory to God and peace on earth. And Mary and Joseph look at them and go, oh, we believe you. <laughs> and the angel told me that... Yeah, my wife was going to have a baby, and she, was, she wasn't unfaithful. She didn't cheat on me. This baby was going to be born of the Holy Spirit. He was, I was to call his name Jesus because he would save his people from their sin. Mary says, I believe that the angel appeared to me and told me that I was going to conceive of the Spirit, and my baby was going to be great, and he was going to be the Son of God. Imagine the the conversation that unfolds. And we hear that, and it almost seems unbelievable, right? Impossible. But remember what we said last week? It's so absurd that it must be true, <laughs> right? It is true. Historically, it is true. Prophetically, it is true. Logically, you don't make this up. God come to earth. He doesn't come this way. But he came humbly, lowly. 
as a little baby. I, I can't imagine what's going through Mary's mind as she's holding this little one. What's he going to be like? <laughs> and how am I going to parent God? <laughs> right? I mean, I, you, you, there's, there's all kinds of things, but for both of them, for the shepherds and for Joseph and Mary, this would have been a time of confirmation. God's promises are true. They're true. So they, they hear and they see the good news. But, you know, we, we don't see the way the shepherds do. We, we don't get to see the manger. We don't get to see the baby. We don't see all that. But we do, according to the scripture, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so this morning we see with eyes of faith this good news that God has for us. We, see, we hear, we see, and then we believe. That's what happens this night with the shepherds, right? They saw it, they, they heard everything, and they believed it. You say, how do you know they believed? Because they went, they acted, right? That's what faith does. <laughs> this is a picture of what happens when someone gets saved. They hear the good news of the gospel, that Jesus loved them, that he came for them, that he died for them. They see, they see not only that Jesus is Savior and Lord, but they see their own sinfulness and their need. And they believe. They believe. Jesus, I am a sinner. And I, I, I need a Savior. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what Christmas is about. God come, he came to save, and when we, when we receive this salvation, we experience new life and new birth in Christ. We have peace with God. And what happens next? Well, what happens next in our story is exactly what should happen in our life. Right? Verse 17, when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. They share the good news. They hear, they see, they believe, and then <laughs> they tell everyone what they had seen and heard. You know what that is? That's just testimony. You have a testimony. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you, you have experienced, right? You have seen, you have heard this for yourself. Many times people say, well, I just don't know how to share the gospel with someone. Are you saved? If you're saved, you know how to share the gospel with someone. You say, well, I don't know. Well, what does that mean? That means you're just telling someone what happened to you. If you got saved, surely you know how to get saved. <laughs> These shepherds are so excited over this good news. They're so overwhelmed that they can't keep it to themselves. Brothers and sisters, this is what should happen to us at Christmas. The good news of Christmas should so move our hearts that we go and tell. You won't believe what happened. It was unbelievable. And, and to experience new life and new birth, to experience salvation in Christ... You can, you can share the same news. You won't believe what happened to me. Now, some of us have kind of lost that, right? I mean, this is typical of a new believer. When, when you first got saved, man, you told everybody. And something happens along the way, doesn't it? Somewhere along the way, you tend to lose that excitement. You lose the joy of your salvation. And, and if that's you this morning, then I want to encourage you, right, Notice how this is handled, <laughs> because Mary and the shepherds are going to help us regain that joy and excitement. Now, as you go, people will respond. They will. Regard you know, they may respond positively, they may respond negatively, but people will respond. And that's what happens as the shepherds go that night. Right? Verse 18, all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. <laughs> that word wonder, it means to be astonished. It's something that is jaw-dropping. <laughs> People were filled with wonder as they hear the news that the shepherds proclaim. 
You know, although many wondered, many didn't seem to believe. You don't, you don't read that there were multitudes of people flocking to the manger that night. What an incredible story, right? An interesting story, but those are shepherds, right? You can't trust those guys. I'm not really sure we can believe what, what they had to say, but wow, maybe we should check into that more. I'm sure there were some who heard that news. Isn't that what happens as you go and you share the gospel? Some people wonder. Some people question and want to search a little deeper. Sometimes God so opens hearts and minds that someone just says, that's what I need. And sometimes people get upset with you. Right? I don't want to hear that. Don't tell me that. We're not responsible for how people respond. We're only responsible to share the good news. And that's what these shepherds do on this first Christmas morning. They go and they tell. And when you, <laughs> yeah, again, maybe you're having a hard time this morning getting excited about what is taking place here, but let's follow Mary's lead. Verse 19, Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. She takes everything that she's seen, everything that she's heard, and she just stores it up. Every bit of information, she doesn't let any of it go. The angels and the shepherds and, and this word from God and this news. And she just puts it all in her heart. And then she ponders it. See, what does that mean? She thinks deeply and carefully about it. We sing that song at Christmas, Mary, did you know? That baby boy, she knew. Right? God told her. God told her. Now, how that plays out and what that means for her in the future, she doesn't know. She doesn't know, she doesn't know about the cross. As we come to the end of Luke chapter 2, she's going to get some words that are going to help her to see. She doesn't know what life is going to be like. Can you imagine? She, I'm sure this is her first parent. She's thinking all of the things that a first parent is thinking. She's, she's afraid. How am I going to care for her? How am I going to? This is a teenage girl, right? Hey, hey. What about discipline? You know, how do you discipline God, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, there's got to be different things going through her mind at this moment. And she's pondering and she's thinking and she's wondering. If you're having a difficult time getting excited this morning, about Christmas, about who he is and what he's done, then stop. Store it all up. Think deeply. Think carefully about this truth that God has come. He has come for you. He loved you. He died for you. He came to be your Savior. Think about the links in the heights that, that he went through to rescue us from our sin. Think long and hard about the love of God on display through the incarnation, through the crucifixion, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That you can know God. That you can have a relationship with him now through Jesus Christ. Let that sink deep in your heart. Ponder it. Meditate on it like Mary. Treasure them up. And I'm willing to guess that if you do that, your heart will be impacted by those truths. And perhaps so much so that you just can't keep it to yourself. And you'll have to tell someone. And you'll have to share the good news. Well, lastly, we see in verse 20, the shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Right. Lastly, this morning, brothers and sisters, let us praise 
God for this good news. <laughs> you know, God allowed these nobodies, really, to be part of one of the most incredible nights the world has ever known. And then they have to go right back to normal, everyday life. <laughs> Can you imagine what it must have been like? In the fields, watching the sheep, angels, Savior, Messiah, it's all true. And then back to work. We have that privilege, do we not? Every Lord's Day to gather together and celebrate this work. And it's good. And it's glorious. We come into the very presence of God. And then we have to go back. Right? Tomorrow morning, you're going to go back to work. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? You're going to go back to school. Right? You're going to go back to your normal, everyday life. But you can go back like the shepherds, glorifying and praising God for all he has done. And that should be our heart, right? That should be our desire. And this is what you should expect. This is what an encounter with the Savior does. When you hear, when you see, when you believe, your heart is transformed. I wonder this morning if there would be one here who would say, I've never been transformed by this news. Can I ask you with all sincerity and concern, do you have peace with God through Jesus Christ? Has there been a time in your life when you recognize Jesus for who he is? For sa as Savior, as Lord, and you recognize your sinfulness, that you needed to be saved. Dear friend, that's what Christmas is about. Christmas is a rescue mission. He came to save you. And, and the good news for you this morning is that that can happen today. Today, if you would call on the name of the Lord and you would ask him to forgive you of your sin and to save you, he'll do it. He'll do it. In fact, as we close and sing in a little bit, I would encourage you to do just that. And if you do, if you, if you ask him to save you, just tell someone, tell a friend, tell me. I'd love to know that you made this decision to follow Christ. I'd love to help you on your walk as a Christian. You know, brothers and sisters, we do. We come for this purpose, do we not? To glorify and praise God for who he is and for what he's done. I hope you understand that. We are, we're not here to entertain you. We're not here to be a life coach. Right? We're not here just to kind of give you some good tips. or We're not even here to make you feel better about yourself. In fact, we come together not to make you feel better, but to cause you to think less about yourself and more about Jesus. That's what we want. That's what we want more than anything. We want to glorify and praise God as a faith family as we gather together week after week. So if, if you're here this morning and you're sitting and you're kind of, you're evaluating everything. Oh, I like that song. I don't like that song. I, you know, the message was too long or the message was too short or not, not, not enough of this and not enough of that. If, if you're just evaluating and you're kind of going to leave and you're here for the wrong reason, dear friend. All of the, I told you, right? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm weak and inadequate for this task, but we have an incredible privilege to gather together in the presence of God each Lord's day. And God has a message for you from his word. That's good news. And, and this is what we want, right? We want God to be. And so let me encourage you. Let me encourage you, brothers and sisters. We come and we worship and we praise. And more than anything, what I want is for you to take that out as you leave. Take the good news. Take, take what God has done, what he is doing in your life out and share it with people who need to hear it. Go forth worshiping and praising God. 
And if that's hard for you, just do like Mary. Take some time and think a lot about what God has done for you, how he loved you. We're going to close in prayer, and then after we pray, we're going to sing. I think it would be good maybe just to uh, sing that, that Christmas carol. Go tell it on the mountain. That's what I want. As we leave, go and tell. But I pray this morning you have seen and heard the good news. Let's pray.